I'm really excited about the progress that I'm finally making on our cow project. For those of you who haven't been following us, uh, just to catch you up to speed, earlier this spring, uh, we had about an acre of land cleared here behind me. Uh, it was mostly really small trees and overgrown brush, uh, but it was too big for us to clear by hand. So we had a company come in, an awesome company called Knobside Custom Land Clearing. You can check out the video we did with them. They came in with a machine that can cut down all of those little trees and mulch them as they cut them so that within a day you're left with just an open field. Now we did leave quite a few trees. We left anything that was bigger than about eight inches in diameter because we want the shade for the animals that we're going to be putting back here. Since that time, I've been debating about how I wanna go forward with putting up fencing for our animals. My original plan was to put up field fencing because we wanna be able to keep our, our Nigerian dwarf goats back here with the milk cow that we're going to be getting. It ended up being just way too big of a project for Sarah and I to do by ourselves, and we didn't wanna to have to hire someone to come and do it. So we decided that we were going to train our goats to respect electric fence. So for about the last six weeks, we've been working with the goats, first within their their regular pen that is fenced with field fencing. We put electric fence on the inside of that to teach them what the electric fence was. And now for about the last month, they've been out in a temporary pen that is just electric fence. It has six strands of electric wire and they have never escaped from it. So we're confident that they are now trained to respect the electric fence. That leads me to where we are today, back here getting ready to put electric fence around this entire area. One of the main things that I was worried about while putting up fencing back here is the, the condition of the ground back here. Here in the Ozarks, we have a lot of rock, a lot of rock. In fact, this part of our property has about two inches of topsoil, and then it's pretty much gravel from there on down. And it's not real fine gravel, it's big enough rocks that it's very hard to dig uh, even when I've tried to use the auger that I have for my tractor, it won't go down more than maybe eight or so inches before it just won't go any further. And digging with a regular post hole digger that you, you know, slam in the ground and try to pull out just is impossible. So I started to research alternative ways to do corner posts for the fence. And I found a product that really intrigued me because what their claim was is that you could build your corner posts out of T-posts. The company is called Wedgelock. Now, because I know that even in this rocky ground, I can typically still drive T-posts, this really intrigued me because if I could build my corner posts out of T-posts, this would save me a ton of time, a ton of headache, and probably from having to rent or hire someone with bigger equipment to come in and help me put in corner posts. Let's take a walk back to one that I've already done, and I can explain for those of you who don't know the importance of a corner post, what it is, why you need it, and why any good fence isn't good if you don't have a good corner. So way down at the end of this trail is one corner that I've already done. Let's walk down there and take a look at it. So here is one of the corners that I've already put in. And you can see that this is built completely out of T-posts. Now T-posts are very strong, uh, but when you just have one T-post, like if we were just to try to use one T-post like this in a corner, you can see that if you were trying to pull your fencing tight, this T-post wiggles and wobbles, and over time, the pressure on the fence is going to pull this, this T-post over. That's where this system is really nice, because what you do is you use three T-posts, so we've got one here in the corner, and then this one is, a, is the brace that's coming down to the bottom of this one. And you can see that when I come and I push on this corner, I cannot, I cannot budge this as hard as I can push. So when our fencing comes around and wraps around this corner and then goes back up that way, we can pull that fence as tight as we can 
and this corner is going to be nice and strong. That's the importance of a good corner post. In order for a fence to stay nice and to protect your animals, it needs to be able to be put up tight. And if you can't pull tight around the corners, your whole fence is going to be thrown off. It might start out looking nice and tight and strong, but over time, as these corners start to pull in from not being braced correctly, your fence is gonna get saggy and it's going to, you know, maybe the bottom wire, especially on an electric fence, will hang on the ground and short out the fence and then your animals will be able to get out. So you need to have nice, strong corners on your fence. Now, when you buy these kits, they come with enough to do one corner. So basically it's a bracket for this top T-post here and one bracket for each T-post at the ground. So three brackets in, in general. Now, that's enough if you have a perfect 90 degree angle corner or close to perfect 90 degree corner. But because this corner here is at a weird angle because of just the way our property is laid out, I had to use two different T-posts in the corner. I drove them in right next to each other and then wired them together so I actually had to use one extra bracket out of another packet. So it took me like one and a half kits to do this corner, uh, but it saved me a ton of time. Instead of having to cement in poles or drive in big metal poles with specialized equipment, it took me about 30 minutes to do this corner. And that is a huge time saver and a huge money saver. No cement, no renting equipment, no you know having to buy expensive poles. Um, I mean, these T-posts, these are seven foot T-posts that I started with. Uh, so they're driven in about a foot and a half and you know, they're good and strong. So let's go back up by the cow barn. I'm gonna show you guys how to install one of these. And then we're also going to install one to hang our gate on today. Uh, so we're gonna basically be done with all of the corners and the gates on this project by the end of the day. I'm gonna be ready to start putting in the regular T-posts along the straight line so we can start putting up electric fence. But look, the pigs came over to say hi to us. Good morning, pigs. How are you guys today? Are you having a good day so far? Well, the pigs have definitely learned to respect the boundaries of their electric fence now. It's been, I think, about a week now that we've had them out and no one's escaped. No one's even trying to escape anymore. They're just happy pigs. They have this big paddock. It's about a quarter of an acre and they're just absolutely loving it. All right, so we're back up here at the front corner. First thing I'm going to do is drive in this T-post that will be in the actual corner. Then we'll open up one of the kits and I'll show you the parts that come in the kit. So hopefully it'll all make a lot more sense to you as we go forward. Here's my fancy equipment. We just decided to take a quick break in the shade to get a drink. Now the turkeys came to say hi. They are loving their freedom now too, out in their new run. All right, let me show you what comes in one of these uh, kits that you purchase. Now, the one thing I'll say that I've learned after putting up several of these now is that the directions that come with these are not very clear. Uh, I would say that is probably the biggest downside to these. And one of the reasons I wanted to do a how-to for you guys so that if you go out and purchase these, hopefully it'll make a little more sense to you. So the only directions that come with these are printed right on the package. There's a little bit right here on the front that tells you a little bit about how to do it. And then there's some instructions printed on the back and a couple tips. But to be honest, if you don't know what you're doing, they don't really make a lot of sense. So um, I'm hoping that I can help you guys out today by showing you 
how to put these up now that I've figured it out. Inside of each one of these packages, there's three types of parts. Let me show you what they are. So each packet will come with three of these right here. This is the collar that slides down onto the T-post. It also comes with three of these right here. This is the what they call the wedge that slides down and holds this collar tight on the T-post so it can't move. And then it comes with four of these. These are the sleeve that the brace T-post slides into. Let's go put this on the T-post and it'll make more sense when I show you. Okay, so you've got your collar and the collar slides down over the T-post and you put it where you want it. And then the wedge slides down on the back of the T-post and holds that collar in place. And then for the sleeve, the sleeve can go in one of two ways. Uh, for the one that's up here at the top, the sleeve is going to go in like this. So you can see that the T-post will brace down like this. But if this were one of the T-posts where you need it at the bottom, you just flip this around and it goes like this so that it would be at the bottom angling up. So for now, we're going to take this all off. I need to put in the other two T-posts that will make this corner brace. All right, so the way that you figure out where the next T-post is going to go is you take one of your T-posts and you lay it at the base of your corner post. And then the way that you figure out where your next T-post is going to go is you go from the end of this T-post and you measure back 16 inches. So I know on my T-posts here, and I don't know if they're all the same, but I think they are, it's nine of these little knobs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So right here is where my next T-post will go. So I will put this T-post in here and then I'll show you how we set up the first angle brace. All right, so now we've got this second T-post in. On this T-post, the collar will go all the way down to the bottom. So we'll just slide that down and then we'll use our wedge to hold that onto the T-post. Just like that. Then we'll use the sleeve. We'll put that in like that. And that one is all done. Now over on our corner post, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start by putting the sleeve on, but this one will stay up toward the top. Now you won't know exactly where this one's going to go until you get your brace T-post in place. So at this point, you may have to move it. So we're gonna put that on. We slid the wedge in to hold it in place. And then we're going to put our sleeve on. Now once we know for sure we have this all in place, there are these little bitty tabs inside of this sleeve that you'll bend with a screwdriver and that will hold that on permanently. But for now, we're just gonna leave it like this. Now we're gonna just grab another T-post and put it in there and see if it's in the right spot. All right, so first we'll put this T-post down here at the bottom. And you'll see it doesn't quite reach to there. So we'll just take the wedge out and we'll move this down to where it slides onto that T-post which looks like right there. Then we'll put the wedge back in. What I have noticed is sometimes the paint on the T-post can make it a little weird to put that wedge in, but they go in. So there we go. So that one is done. And you can see now if I were to just push on this T-post without the brace, I could just push this T-post right over. But now that the brace is there, there's no way I can push that over. But it's still wobbly this way, which is why we need to put the second one running down this trail. And then this will be a nice, strong corner.
So now that we have that first angle brace in, we basically will repeat the process on this other side to complete our corner, except this time we don't need to put a second collar at the top of the corner. On these collars, you can put multiple of the sleeves. I'll show you that after I get this post put in the ground. But first we need to measure. So once again, you lay your post to the corner and then you measure back 16 inches from the ed end of the post. So, so our next post will go right here. All right, so to finish this corner, it's gonna use all of the pieces that are left in the kit. First thing we're going to do is install our sleeve over on this pole. Again, that'll go all the way down to the ground and we'll lock it in place with this wedge. Just like that. And then we'll use one of the sleeves. That slides in like that. And then we'll come up to this collar over here that's already in place. And you can see that these collars will allow four of these to go in. So we don't need to add another collar. We'll just add that sleeve in place. And now all we need to do is put our cross beam T-post in. All right, so we'll put our T-post here, down at the bottom. And you can see it doesn't quite line up over here. So you can see that when I put this T-post in, it kind of twisted and the angle of this T-post isn't pointing toward the post in the corner, which it needs to be. Otherwise, when we put this T-post in, it's not gonna lie, it's not gonna be able to hit at the corner. So all you need to do is take a big pipe wrench and you can twist these T-posts. Now this one's pretty tough, so I'm gonna also use a metal pipe to help me a little bit. And we'll just twist that T-post until it's at the right angle and lines up with the corner post. No need to take it back out and start over. Now that we've twisted that post to the right angle, we should be able to just slide our T-post in down here at the bottom. And you can see one more thing is that now it's not lining up here. That means we need to raise that one up a little bit until it meets up here at the top. All right, so I've raised this bottom uh, collar just, you know, about, I don't know, four inches off the ground or so. And now when we try to put this T-post in, you can see that it lines up perfectly. And now that all of these are in, you can picture our fence wire coming around this corner. It's gonna be pulling you know, this T-post, the tendency is gonna be for the wire to pull this T-post that way, but you can see that now that is a nice, strong corner. These things save you so much time. And really, I mean, this is something that you can do, one person can do. You're not mixing concrete. You're not doing all of the things that take up a ton of time. And really, even, I mean, I'm doing this as more of a permanent fence, but if you were doing a temporary fence, this is another great way to use this product because you're not drilling huge holes, you're just using T-posts, putting them in, and if you needed to take it back down, you could do it easily. So this corner is now complete. I'm gonna move on to where I'm gonna put the gate. Well, I've got the gate installed. I actually think it turned out pretty darn good. I decided to install it here where our center fence is going to be. We're going to be dividing this paddock into two separate sections. Uh, most of the time the animals will have access to both sides, but in the event that we need to work on one side or want to replant some grass, this will give us the opportunity to you know, close them off into just one half of this paddock. So this runs down that way, that's the center, which is why I decided to put a gate here because this corner brace should be a nice strong place for the gate. So you can see the kit comes with these brackets that just bolt right to a T-post. 
and then run through your standard gate. Now here I'm using an eight foot gate. Uh, I'll have to watch it over time to see how this supports the weight of an eight foot gate. I've had one on the goat, the temporary goat pen that we made uh, for you know about a month now, uh, but that's only a four foot gate, but that seems to be holding up really well. I don't see it sagging at all or anything like that. So I'm at least hopeful that the same will be true for this eight foot gate. I did put some pieces of wire on these T-posts over here uh, just to kind of simulate the fence because until the fence is on here pulling everything tight, uh, these brackets don't do a lot uh, until there's that pressure pulling everything together. So I will leave a link to these uh, in our Amazon shop if you guys want to check them out. Again, they're called Wedge Lock. I think this is a really cool product. And for people who have rocky ground like we do here, I think this is really a great solution for fencing. Hey, if you're enjoying our channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. If you know other people who might enjoy this or enjoy the lifestyle that we live here out in the country, uh, go ahead and share this on your social media. And until next time, you guys, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.